You already play for one of the greatest clubs in the world. It seems another one, Manchester United, are very interested in you. Are you flattered by that level of interest in you when you're already at a great club? No, you're always flattered when when teams show interest in you as a player. But uh, what you say, I think I'm at the biggest club in the world at the moment. I feel fine there, so uh, no news. Frankie de Jong there, flattered by the interest of Manchester United having him. And it's interest only at this point in time. We've got him with the bib. What's going on? Everyone's getting frustrated. What I want to do in this video is run through that interview, run through what we can take from it and completely bring you up to date into, into how this situation has evolved, what the moving parts are. Because I know all of you can't join in my live streams that I do every morning. So in this short video, I'll summarize it all for you and run through that interview and what we can take from that. So please, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, you do learn something, please consider subscribing to United People's TV. I would love to have you as part of the growing community here. It's fantastic. It really, really is. I do say so myself. You can hit the notification bell as well if you want to get a ping every time I go live with a video. But look, let's run through this story and where it's currently at. Now, we know full well that Manchester United had a 60 million euro plus 10 million euro bid rejected for Frankie de Jong last Friday. And there's no change on that. Manchester United haven't gone back in with a second bid, which is surprising to me. It's probably surprising to you. That's the thing I wanted to see change this summer. United not taking too long between bids. We know this is a negotiation process. Let's negotiate. United aren't doing anything at this moment in time. And this is what the established journalists are saying on this situation. This is from David Ornstein from The Athletic saying that Barcelona player Franco de Jong is believed to be Manchester United's top priority. And we know that. It is understood talks between United and Barcelona have some way to run and that Manchester United have got other options. If we head over here and we see what Laurie Whitwell saying on the situation. He said United are hoping to make de Jong the marquee summer signing. That's clear as day now. Man United have prioritised and identified de Jong as the number one target. And I can understand exactly why. I'll explain that a little bit later in the video. I kind of already done it a few times anyway, though. But sources say an agreement with Barca could be some way off yet. United are fully aware of the financial difficulties at the new camp and are prepared to wait to bring the price down. And that really is becoming a bit of a, a common theme among those clearly connected and with sources close to the story. United are prepared to wait. We head over to James Ducker from The Telegraph saying United have prioritised a deal for De Jong. And we go down here saying, look, United have been made it clear they will not pay over the odds for De Jong and are acutely aware of their financial problems. That's where we're currently at with this situation. It started, a, it all started, as I said, the, the frustration that a lot of United fans have has been exacerbated by the fact that Gerard Romero came out and said it was 95% done when it probably wasn't only just a conversation. It got United fans excited that the end was in sight right at the beginning, whereas in reality, we were just at the start of that process. That accelerated the frustration that United fans have. But from this point onwards, I really am in the... Fr I, I can join in that frustration now. I told you that this week for me was when I needed to see a difference from United between how long it went from that first bid. They were never accepting 70 million, but also at the same time, Manchester United are simply put, not paying 100 million for Frankie de Jong. Barcelona paid 86 million euros in total for Frankie de Jong, and they're going to try and get a profit on a player who hasn't improved, really, since he joined from Ajax, at a time when they are over a billion in debt, at a time when they know they need to sell, Barcelona are trying to play hardball. And that's where this impasse is coming from. Because you can understand all points of view here from United's perspective. They have justification. There's justification if United wait and don't pay 100 million euros for, for Frank de Jong, for a player who they have to sell. We know that Barcelona don't hold all the negotiation power in that sense. So I understand the justification for trying to wait and reduce that price. But at the same time, there is real justification for what happens when you go out and you spend big money on a player. And it's, it's pissing me off how I keep having to reference how Liverpool are doing it correctly, but they keep doing it correctly. And they are currently the squad they are, the strength that they are, and the position that they are because they keep doing things correctly. Benfica, they were charging too much for Darwin Nunes. 100 million euros overall. What did Liverpool do? Did they haggle? Did they spend two, three weeks trying to get five, 10 million euros off it? No. They just went out and paid it. Ultimately, we know why that doesn't happen at Manchester United. And I don't have to be the person that tells you that. 
I've spoke about this quite in depth in my stream this morning. The concept of the commodity of time. Time is such a valuable asset. And in the summer where Manchester United need to sign four players and probably sell five or six, time might be the thing that we run out of, not money. And that's something that this bloke doesn't understand. All he cares about is what is that bottom line. I don't particularly think at this point, again, I might be giving him too much leeway. I think it's probably down to Joel Glazer and Richard Arnold more than it is John Murto. The, the first offer's gone in. We've done it. Obviously, they signed off on that bid, but because they are the finances, financiers of this whole situation, Joel Glazer will have to sign off on the next offer. And United are digging their heels in. Remember that the Glazers are taking out another £10 million pounds worth of dividends in June. So it's biannually, another 20 million leaving the club this year, but they won't pay 15 million extra to Barcelona for Frankie de Jong. Fucking bullshit. We know that. We know that's the case, and that's not going to change until they leave the club. But Manchester United are now in a situation where we know what de Jong has said about that transfer. If we head over here and we go back to this interview, right, and we listen to this one more time. You already play for one of the greatest clubs in the world. It seems another one, Manchester United, are very interested in you. Are you flattered by that level of interest in you when you're already at a great club? No, you're always flattered when when teams show interest in you as a player. But uh, what you say, I think I'm at the biggest club in the world at the moment. I feel fine there, so uh, no news. I mean, he says no news there, but he's... <sighs> He's happy at Barcelona, man. He's gone on record that he, with everything that's going on and the fact that he still might be leaving Barcelona still says they're the biggest club in the world. He's fine there. No news. De Jong is not going to angle for a move away. De Jong is not going to force a transfer out of that club. United, simply put, we've lost a little bit of negotiation power in that sense with Frank De Jong speaking there. If he did the standard sort of thing that you'd normally hear, players being linked with moves away, uh, I'm not going to comment on it. Leave it up to you. Instead, Frankie, you double down. Made it tougher for Manchester United. I don't think it stops Manchester United going after him in any way, shape or form. But it's interesting really to see him speaking like that. Because there's absolutely no doubt that Eric Ten Hag wants him at Manchester United. That Eric Ten Hag is prioritising him at Manchester United. But I have to admit, I think Frankie de Jong has made it a little bit more difficult for us, for Eric Ten Hag, to get that deal done there. By him saying that, it, we all know that Barcelona are basically going to be forced to sell unless they can raise money elsewhere. And United know that too. And that's why, we're, as I said, we're at this, we're this crossroads. We're stuck. Because if Barcelona won't reduce their asking price from £100 million, which is ridiculous, no way we should pay £100 million for Frankie de Jong, given the circumstances of it all. We know that Barcelona need money. They can't register Christensen or Frank Kessie from AC Milan because their wage bill's too much. The only way they get rid of some of that is by selling players. And Frankie de Jong is number one on that list because of not only his value to the club and how much wages they take off, there isn't really no alternative, not, not no alternative, but there's nobody who could fix the solutions at that club financially this summer more than that man there, Frankie de Jong. And... It's a really, really frustrating moment now for United fans. At this moment in time, right, I want United to be looking elsewhere, right? United have got to be looking elsewhere. United have got to be using this time. So if we are going to play hardball, it seems like we're playing hardball. I don't really think it's a complete and correct thing to do. Look, I've already said this multiple times. I think it's, it's quite easy. If they want 85 million guaranteed, let's give them 85 million total. Let's go 75 million guaranteed with 10 million in add-ons. You really think they're going to reject that? I don't think so. That's only a 10, 10, 15 million increase on our current offer. In the grand scheme of transfers, that's not much money at all. The United get it done. As I say, the value of time in this transfer window, shit. We might not run out of money, but we might run out of time. Frankie de Jong's made it more difficult for us with that interview, I do think. Could have just like stayed there quietly. I don't think he wants to leave Barcelona. And I'm not saying that he would be unhappy at Manchester United, because he would be. Being the centrepiece of this new Ten Hag team going forward, he would be, he would, I think he would quickly forget about, the, about being sad at leaving Barcelona if he really was the centrepiece of a new Manchester United team under Eric Ten Hag. But that's the whole situation summarised. As I said, I, do, I, I, I speak about this in my morning live streams, but not everybody can join in. That's why I do these shorter videos, so I can cater to everybody. 
Some people prefer the shorter 10 minute videos. Some people prefer the longer 45 minute interactive videos. But that's everything on Frankie de Jong. I think he's made it more difficult with that interview. I don't think he's made it impossible. Ultimately, United know what the price is. Fabrizio saying 85 million guaranteed. You've got other reports saying that they want 100 million overall. They're not getting that. But at what point do United go, you know what? Let's walk away. Right now, we should be laying a decent offer on the table in the region of 80 million euros and leaving it there and say, look, stew on it. We'll start going elsewhere because we've got to sign a defensive midfielder. We've got to sign an attacker. We've got to sign a centre-back as well. There's other things we can do. Can we not multitask? Can we not do more than one thing at once? That's always been a bit of a frustration for United fans. And unfortunately, we're starting to see certain patterns repeating themselves this summer that we didn't want to see, that we don't need to see if we're going to truly believe a rebuild's happening. But that's everything explained. As I said, I wanted to run through that interview with you here because I think it's quite important. You can let me know what you think and what your reaction is to that interview. And as always, if you're new to United People's TV and you're still here, good on you, first of all. Second of all, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more. Take it easy.